Okay, it's going, Seth, so you can call it to order and then we'll do a roll call. All right, I'm uh, calling to order um, on, let's see, this is February 10th, 906 for the LTAC uh, Advisory Committee. Um, anything else I'm supposed to say right now? That, I think that should do it. Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll run the roll call real quick. Uh, let's see, we have Sue Brayton. Here. Janae Maton. Here. Stephanie Lyle. Here. Mary Damaris. Here. Lindsay Stover. Here. James Carr. Here. And Jenny Wellman. Here. And we are down one member because uh, John Moist has resigned from LTAC. So we have Is eight total resigned? members, counting, counting Seth, who's the chair. Josh, can I just ask, he resigned. Was he a collector? He was a collector, yes. So now we're down a collector again. We're down a collector, which is the hardest position to fill. So oh, okay. we'll, we'll get started on that one. If you have any ideas, just please reach out to people. Okay. All right, so do I, can I start moving down the agenda now, Josh? Yep. Okay. Second here, just getting my screens sorted out. All right, so I guess I can start by introducing myself. So Seth Storset, I'm a new city council member. I am 40 something days in right now. Um, so very new, but excited to serve our community. Um, you know, we, we broke off and we have council members leading in different areas. Um, I find this one very interesting. Um, and so I look forward to learning more from, from you guys. Um, I think this is really important when it comes to our, you know, when we have a, a tax on lodging and how, how those tax dollars are used to increase um, tourism and, and really, you know, what are the best avenues for doing that? What gives us our best ROI? So I look forward to hearing from you guys. You're really the experts in the field and you know, look for your recommendations uh, and guidance and seeing what's capable to do. So um, I guess so next I'll turn it over Hi, to uh, our new tourism and communications coordinator, Jenica, welcome. And maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, sure, I am, um, name's Jenica. Um, I just joined a week ago on <laughs> uh, January 31st. Um, I moved to the area to be closer to family, but I am originally from San Diego, lived in Colorado for a little bit, also grew up a little bit in Idaho, um, and just, yeah, kind of have been everywhere. Um, I actually lived in Europe for two years as well. Um, my previous background with uh, communications was with SeaWorld San Diego. I was there for 10 years. Um, there um, was in public relations, um, um, for, for a while, yeah, I've been through a lot of stuff there, but um, I love the area. I mean, Gig Harbor, like when I saw this job posting, it was like, you know, just loved it. Um, so I looked up the area, did all my research there, and then, um, yeah, here we are. So yeah, it's exciting. Welcome. Laura, you made it. Yes, you were on mute. We Sorry, I'm on my phone right excuse. now. Okay, um, here we go. Yeah, I, I, I was just on a Zoom prior to this, and it worked just fine. So, not really sure what the problem is, but I know we've had this a couple of times. Um, I have a few screen shares for items on our agenda, um, and so I'm going to be working on getting that up while we go through items. But first, of course, welcome, Council Member Storset. We're very glad to have you. Uh, both on council and here on LTAC. Um, it's an exciting new chapter for all of our LTAC members um, and our chair. So we're looking forward to the future. Um, and I, I know we're, I think I just missed a little bit of Jenica's uh, introduction, but we are very, very, very glad to have her. She's a wonderful writer and she brings along a great amount of experience as well. So we are, we're thrilled to be fully staffed at long last. All right, thanks. Yeah, so we did a call to order, roll call, and then uh, introductions. So we are on the update for the 2022 LTAC grants and award notifications. Uh, wonderful. And this is an item just discussed as well. We um, are processing our 2021 grant awardees um, and also looking at the amounts that we could not fulfill due to either COVID or um, other extenuating circumstances. 
um, and what amount is left over from that initial allocation. Um, what my instinct says is that is still an amount that should be allocated, even though it wasn't able to be used in 2021, um, and possibly applied for a second round of grants, similar to the way we did it in 2021. Um, we will have a total final number on that as soon as we process some of the end uh, submissions for, for final payments. So we'll have a full number of how much was actually spent versus how much was awarded in 2021. Um, and I did want to just pass that idea by the committee for thoughts and, um, and what we think that might look like. Um, can I just ask Josh, since we went through the, I mean, is that something you think is, is it approved to do with the leftover funds? Um, you know, after we, what was the gentleman's name that came on board that went through the trail with us or? Or from, from, from MRSB. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of work on for us as a committee. It took a lot of time. I'm just wondering, is that legal legal to do it that way? Before uh, yeah, it's it's legal. It's something you can do. But technically, you have nine hundred thousand dollars in leftover funds already because that's your ending fund balance. So whatever is unspent just makes that balance bigger. So whether you want to take the initiative to spend more this year is kind of up to you to decide. Um, but you, it just, it's just going to swell that ending fund balance, um, which you can tap into anytime you want. So it's, it's right. really kind of up to the committee. So if our, if our intent, go ahead, Josh. I'll, I'll, I'll caveat that by saying so it's really it's up okay. to the mayor if she wants to undertake a, undertake a something like that, because it's an administrative thing that has to be done before the committee can, can take action on it. But um, certainly the committee can make recommendation on it. I, I can speak from the point of view of, you know, the nonprofits that would be applying for those grants, that if operating funds and marketing funds were available, um, this is the time to do it because there is not going to be, you know, all the federal programs that were available to us last year for COVID relief and we're not back to capacity. So, um, you know, this could really be a huge help um, and use the funds for, you know, a lot of the purposes that they were intended for. Recording in progress. There we there go. We All right, there we go. I'm sorry. I think I'm fully able to share screen and at least talk to you, if not see you. This is. Yeah, we can we can hear you. We just can't see you. Right. Oh wait, there you are. Slow but sure. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, my thoughts are that that we intended to spend that 125 fully for two years, and we haven't been able to for two years. So there's additional funds that were meant to be spent that weren't able uh, to be used by awardees. Um, I think those could be more active in the community. Um, I know that there were some things that we couldn't fund in this last round, and we saw our largest amount of applications. I think we want to encourage people to continue to apply. Um, and find new ways that we can promote tourism um, through those events. I know that that's, it does take time. And so you're incredibly right that it does take committee time and effort. Um, I think that is what those, part of what those funds are designed to do. Um, and if we're going full steam ahead into trying to get people out and about, especially with the announcement of mask mandates dropping pretty soon, I think we have some opportunity to gain some steam and keep rolling there. Um, and apply those funds in a way that that they've been meaning to be used for the last two years. But I'm op I'm open to commentary. I'm open to thoughts. Um, Laura, can you put up what what people asked for and what we allocated to them? Ooh, yeah, I think I can. Um, for 2022. Oh, for 2022. Uh, yes. yes, I can. Let me get into that folder. Thank you. I guess those would be the questions. Could the people that applied before that we didn't accept because we didn't have enough money or can people reapply for more? What would be the guidelines or we just kind of, you just apply? I'm gonna like, defer to Josh on that. I know some of our directive has been that $20,000 per cap ask, but we don't, and that's passed by council right now. Um, so that, thoughts. Just 
just to clarify, Laura, the 20,000 cap is not a council policy. It's just Got it. a administrative okay. policy that the former mayor wanted to have. Okay. $125,000 cap is not a council cap either. That's just a policy that the former mayor wanted to have. Gotcha. So, okay. And the, the repeat applications, that's completely up to LTAC to decide if they want to fund someone again. Um, we can open it up for them to apply if we're going to do another round of applications. Um, but that's entirely up to LTAC to make that recommendation. Yeah, so the Korean festival, what, did we did we make a decision we that we would give them some money? So that's just not yes. updated in here. Okay. No, this is this is right before that happened. So this was our final conversation and your final recommendations on funding. Okay. Um, and I know we had we had decreased the asks for some of them. Um, you know, I think we we passed we ended up funding the summer arts festival, but giving less to the open jury to art show. Um, you're opposite of way around there. Um, there's an opportunity to maybe look through and see if there is a way to provide a bit more or perhaps fund something like Chumfest um, with those leftover funds that weren't allocated for 2022 or 2021 or 2020. Is this the full thing? Because I don't see the um, history museum on here. Oh, sorry. Scroll. Oh, okay. Thank you. Let me scroll. Let me zoom out so we can get everyone there. And then, Laura, am I correct? We don't have the number yet. We'll have it. I don't know. We're processing the final amounts of um, gotcha. uh, receipts right now. So there was one. We did award $1,000 to the Counter Counterwood Ladies Golf Association, and I did not receive receipts or backup for that. So I followed up, but. Um, but we'll we'll move forward as best we can. We can only do what we we received. But um, just to clarify, that's 2021 leftover. And 2021 this, leftover. Is, this is 20 what we're looking at on the screen oh, is right. 2022. So pardon me. Yeah. Pardon me. Let me pull You're that. right, Jenny. So we need the do we have the info from from 2021 as to what we awarded? Um I do so here on my my computer I just have the the contracts that were, were signed and uh, approved. So we have $20,000 toward the Downtown Waterfront Alliance Farmers Market. We had, let's see, $6,000 to the Gig Harbor Boat Shop. We had $20,000 to the Gig Harbor Film Festival. We had $8,000 toward the Narrows Challenge, the Gig Harbor Cano uh, Canoe and Kayak Racing Team. Uh, we had $4,000 toward the uh, Gig Harbor Foundation's Peninsula Cider Festival. And we had the operations fees for Harbor Wild Watch on the Sanzi Visitor Center at 15,000. And then I can pull up our spring numbers as well. So I can process that and just see what our, our total amount is. I know that wasn't awarded for the Gig Harbor Film Festival, we did give a amount as well. Um, so there's there's remaining funds there too, uh, because we did have a good amount of cancellations in the last year. And I can pull that number for both years um, and put that forward. Mm -hmm. I'll just, I will go ahead and follow up with that um, once we're able to research that in this coming next week and just update the uh, committee in total. So um, back to Sue's, you know, Sue's um, comment about the time spent if we went for new applications. Mm -hmm. If we had enough money to to maybe bump up the 2022 because we didn't have enough funds to to give everybody what we wanted to, if we had enough enough money to bump up those, we wouldn't have to go through that review, review process again, correct? Gosh, <laughs> what is our <laughs> I, you know, this is all new territory, so I'm not yeah, sure. If you want to do another round of applications, then you should accept, make everyone reapply to keep it fair to new people who want to apply and people that didn't get approved last time. 
Um, so yeah, it will be a whole new application process, a whole new review process, and a whole new recommendation process. So okay, um, so like if that, the history the museum didn't get their full ask, they would have to reapply for the difference. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't think anybody got asked. Yeah, right. It, just about everybody was a little bit under. So um, that would have been an easy fix for sure. Yeah. But are we deciding now? Do we want to take a vote now, Laura, or on, on that? Or we want to see what we have? I think I think it's probably prudent to see what we have in first and then see what we can apply, right? Um, so we'll we'll process those final amounts um, and I will run those numbers for the 2020 cross-referencing on awarded and um, final receipt. Um, and I will I'll send that information to the committee by next week. And and I do think it's important to remember that there are four elements of what the grant funds can be spent for. Tourism marketing is just one of them. Um, but there's, you know, of course, there's the special events, um, marketing and operations. There's operations and capital for municipally owned uh, tourism related facilities and operations of tourism related facilities owned or operated by nonprofits. So um, keeping that in mind, I think you, in theory, and Josh can be the way in on this, it seems uh, from other research that I've done that you could shape a special round for a certain purpose. Um, if if we chose to do that, so or or just make sure that people are applying for one of those four categories. So the only, as as I understand it from MRC, the only external grant category is those those grants. Um, the and I want to make sure I'm clear on this too. Um, the operations for. And Josh, maybe you can it's right there. This. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have it on my screen. It's just the use of revenues, exactly what you can use it for. And operations of tourism related facilities owned or operated by nonprofit organizations is that you just can't spend yes. it for capital. So really, if you take out what the city asks for, the only real things that we're asking people to apply for are the operation of tourism related facilities operated by a nonprofit or events. So it really boils down to those two things for everyone besides the city to apply for. And there's no limitations on when or how often you can ask people to apply for grants or when you can have that window open. Um, that bottleneck there, that's an administrative bottleneck. So depending on what we have the staff for, um, that's why ultimately it will be up to the mayor to decide if this is something that we want staff to spend time on, if it's something we can take on. Um, to work with Laura on that, but this committee, it's, it's appropriate for the committee to make a recommendation to the mayor that says, you know, we have extra money, we think we can do good with it. Um, we think it's worth, worth staff's time or it's not worth staff's time. Um, so that's a motion that you can make probably at the next meeting, it sounds like when we have better numbers. Wonderful. Um, so all that's my to-do list there. Um, I will send an email to you after the final um, amounts are calculated next week. Um, okay, all right. Okay, uh, shall we move forward? I have another fun screen share coming up for you. Um, heading into our lodging tax pace chart, um, I have started to just chart this out and see where we are month over month, um, what we have done historically, what our average intake per month is, and where we're at currently. Um, as you can see, we go back to January 2018. Uh, we outpaced January 2021 by almost double. Um, we are pacing ahead of January 18, 19, and 20 um, with an intake of $30,600.13. Um, our average over that last five year span is at 24,000, just under 25. Um, so that puts us at about 122% pace um, over past av or over average. So we're doing fairly well. Um, as you can see, and I know um, if you'd like more detail on this, I'm happy to send it through to look through. Um, we saw that big, big drop that started in March and April, 2020. Um, and that continued obviously through the summer and through our, really through, through May, 2021, we started to pace up and trend in line with um, 19 and 
18 in June. Um, we outpaced July in 2021. We outpaced August. We outpaced September. And we outpaced October and November, um, even leading into December slightly too. So we ended the year at an intake of $429,556.22. Um, and we were almost on track with 19 with those numbers and pacing ahead of 18, our last two normal years. So we have just a year to date number here for 2021, which will update in the spreadsheet automatically, but um, we're in good standing. Um, any questions? Um, Laura, can we just like have documents like this sent with the agenda so we can look at them before? Is that possible? Sure, this one, this one is, a live document as soon as I receive the numbers from the pre previous month, I put them in. So that may not always be a huge amount of time before, but it, it will be before. So we I don't think we've ever seen it this way. I just did it. Yeah. <laughs> I just put yeah. it together. I just compiled I mean, it's, it. It's typically a graph, right? And it's so um yeah, this is good. Yeah. I thought the I thought the pacing and the the amount and the averages um and just taking a look at where we are in yeah. historical reference is kind of more helpful than than a yeah. graph. Yep. At least yep. for me, I'm a big Excel nerd. Um, so I like yeah. to see that impact. Um, yeah. I'm happy to send this along to you. I'll send this to you right Thank after. You. Sure. Thank you. All right. Um, any questions um, otherwise? Okay. Um, we are also coming up on our 2021 review of our digital ad spend, which I was impressed by. I'm going to go ahead and share that screen as well. We had a chance to run through this yesterday with Datafy and CSource. Show all windows. There we go. All right, there we are. Sure. All right, um, so we started our digital marketing campaign late this year um, in September of 2021, running through, um, and this just goes through the 3rd of January. Um, we took a really highly informed digital marketing um, overview of where we'd been and where we are, what we would like to do, modeling that number of, of people and demographics and psychographics that we've seen from existing data and also use that to model um, what where we might find other new guests. So we did past visitor re-engagement. So our past two years visitors where we found the most data and then lookalike or models from those other key DMAs. Uh, and those are Seattle, Tacoma, Portland, Los Angeles, Phoenix, San Francisco, Sacramento, Spokane, Denver, Salt Lake City and Dallas, Fort Worth, which are our top, top markets. Um, interestingly enough, I know we've always made the assumption that our main traveler base is 65 plus. Um, we are seeing the most engagement and the most um, uh, user uh, attribution. So when they show up on property or they show up um, within the city of Gig Harbor from those markets after clicking through to one of our ads in the age range from 60, uh, I'm sorry, 35 to 64 with a household income of over 75,000. So that's a real change from, I think, what we, we anticipated that target guest being. Um, we did this with a total budget of $15,000, and that was $14,000 on media and $1,000 spent on creative. These are some of the ads that ran. Um, they were visual ads that would go um, between two. So they're, they're video, essentially, that go through uh, like a GAF format where you see one and then you see the other. Um, these were... Uh, directed first to our, our main page for a overall um, familiarity campaign. And then secondly, to our, uh, our website that clicks through to all the booking engines for our STRs, our hotels, um, BNBs, everything else. There. So um, we are very hungry for new images. Um, we would like this to update seasonally. Um, we are working on a campaign and Jenica and I will both be part of this to be out in the community photographing things of interest, um, checking in with all of our, our partners on what's happening throughout town, things that we'd like to promote both on an earned media basis, a PR basis, and then also um, a, uh, an advertising basis as well. So um, 
we're, we're working on those lines. We're also looking into photography um, as a shared expense through some of our partners that are lacking in that. Um, so whether it be seasonal images from interior, um, video, anything that we can do to build up our assets that are usable and sellable, um, we are more than happy to do that. So um, we'll, try to, we'll try to get a date in the upcoming spring here and then also in the winter so we can have a little bit of imagery for, for off season and on season as well. So here's a little bit of our, our ad performance rate. Um, we are performing well with a click-through range. Uh, we, we served 1.798 million impressions uh, with an average cost per, um, per thousand of 778. So that's really competitive in what we spent and what we saw. Um, and those are stretched between prospecting banners. So those modeled audiences based on the people we've seen in the past, the retargeting banners, which are essentially further down in the funnel, people who have visited our site in the past, but not taken any action. And then that native advertising as well. Attribution. So these are um, devices that were seen in our market after being served our ads or clicking through to our ads. So that, that was measured at 908 unique visitors. Uh, hotel attribution was measured at 23 unique visitors. Nights observed in market, four days, four as well. So the destination impact, and this is, this is based on an ADR that would be um, an average throughout the year, um, would be 16,100 on hotels specifically, and then total destination impact with an average spend of a visitor being $121 per day of 439,472. And that was for, through our $14,000 spend. We anticipate that to perform well uh, and perform a little bit more, more aggressively in the year to come. We're also going through for a year round um, digital advertising campaign. So that started on January 22nd. So rather than just September through uh, mid-September through January, we'll see that, that impact throughout the year. Um, they've measured our return on ad spend as a 30 to one. Uh, with an average cost per visitor day of $3.85, which I think we can all agree is, is great, a lot further data than we were getting from a $14,000 spend on a print ad. So these are our, our big takeaways from the last year, creative performance, it performed within goals, the romance banners had the best overall performance um, from that key performance indicator standpoint, followed by scenic and then holiday. So we did a great amount of holiday ads and we used some of the imagery that we had on hand. Um, that obviously was a shorter runtime, so that wouldn't have as much of an impact, but that's great to know on our romance angle, especially heading into February. Um, we can expect our retargeting to improve on those rates uh, if we can promote partner deals, specials, or packages. So we wanna get creative about what we can promote in this off season for our hotels and Airbnbs on what they can do, if they can book a specific package, if we can have some kind of inclusion with an in-town partner. So um, anything along those lines, if we can bundle you know, an experience together with a stay, that's gonna really have, a, have an impact right there as well. Um, so this, this campaign will continue its input into final data through February. Um, and of course we already launched our 22 campaign. So we will, we have two concurrent results coming in. So we still, we're still, still seeing results from those, um, those ads that ran through January 3rd. Uh, and that's just from an attribution standpoint, but, um, but our 2020 2022 campaign is already launched. So we're excited to see where that takes us. Any big, any big questions on, on our digital campaign? I have a question for sure. you, Laura. Actually two, um, just a, some uh, quick clarifications. You said um, there was an average of $121. Is that a per person? Um, per night is that does that in, and does that include lodging it, no it doesn't that includes that's a per visitor uh, impact so it's anticipated that you know if you're spending breakfast lunch and dinner 
out while you're in a destination and you're doing some kind of activity, that would be an average of $121 per person per day. Okay. That's and that's not inclusive of their hotel. Yeah. Okay. Because like in the um, cultural arts area, we calculate $32 per person, like per museum visitor as an impact on the economy. That might that number might be low if this number is correct. So uh, that's interesting. And then I just had a, a quick question. What's native advertising? Uh, native advertising. Jenica, can you can you explain this one a little bit better than I can? Um, sorry, what? <laughs> uh, can you explain native advertising a little bit better than I can? Um, I mean, probably not. Honestly, okay. I, I think like... I think we might have Datafy come in and do. Yeah. We have a new ad rep for the year, and she may be able to come in and just give us a brief overview too, especially as we launch our new campaign with new imagery. So um, that I know that that's something we wanted to do as a committee for a long time. Um, is to see a digital presence and have those numbers to measure. Um, and they can maybe give us a little bit further, um, further deep dive into where our ads are appearing and who's seeing those. Yeah, I was just wondering if native related to ads on our own site or um, I don't know exactly what the connection is there. No, because I think the retargeting oh. banners and all those things kind of go across sites anyway, it, it goes across web. So it tracks the person, not the site. Right. Um, so all, th all three of those appear. Is it, is it like so a it, cookie based kind of thing? It's that uh, it, it, you're really going to see like the sponsored content, um, that you get, like when you're browsing Facebook or, yep. and then you click out of Facebook and then you go to like, um, an article, like you click on a link, it's still mm -hmm. going to have those ads oh, targeted to you. So it, yeah. It follows you. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. But yes, Laura, I, I, have a, I have a quick question. I noticed that $121 figure was from 2018. Yes. Is there, do you anticipate an, an updated figure? Things yes, have changed. It, <laughs> yes, it has. So, um, and that was the last one that they could pull from. Um, we will, we'll try to find updated data. That was the last one they had available. Okay. Um, that was based on a normal year. Um, so we'll try to get an updated number there too. But I think that's probably a more conservative number given inflation and everything else, so. Yeah. Uh, hey, I just have a, a thought or question. It's a bit off the agenda, but just as I look at a lot of these things, especially with our events and what brings people into town, whether they're local gig harbor, you know, uh, citizens or people coming from out of town is just the downtown construction we're gonna have on Harbor View in Stinson. And that's a pretty huge impact on people getting around, you know, as, as we saw uh, late last year, the, you know, how much it, it occupied the other roads and the, the turnarounds just want that to be considered. We talked about like summer sound, sounds at Scanzi or uh, the films or the movies that we do. Um, I just, you know, when we start looking at that event planning, cause that's supposed to start end of this month and run through the end of July, I believe was the date um, for now. Um, so just something to think about. I know that's kind of off topic, but um, there's some, I think could be some pretty large impacts um, yeah. on that cut through. So just so, throwing yeah, it out there. It, it's definitely something that has, has caused a little bit of heartburn. Um, I know that public works, especially in our key learnings from the last round, um, has been more aggressively communicating this side time. What we've really learned is that no matter how much we send out via email, um, you know, via, via internet, people need physical signage. So there's a yep. list of around, I think, almost 15 places that we have throughout town. There's a meeting that uh, our public works director, Jeff Langham, is holding with um, downtown businesses as well. Um, we've reviewed it a few times, both with uh, GHPD and the public works department and the contractor in order to see what the lowest impact could be while still moving this project forward as fast as possible. And the one way closure turned out to be the way that we could finish work as fast as possible with while still maintaining some movement throughout town. Uh, I know last year's big issue was the huge accident on 16 that was unavoidable. Um, and also, you know, the key learnings that we found were that people would get down through Burnham and figure out it was still closed. Uh, we also saw a huge, we're not utilizing our communication channels in the best way possible. We have systems for text notifications and email notifications, but we have a really low signup rate. So that's something we're aggressively working on to offer people the opportunity of where they can find information 
and perhaps even look in, in, in the future into doing some kind of app that offers push notifications. Uh, one of our other council members mentioned something about the Gig Harbor Fire Department and their use of Pulse that is specifically for CPR <laughs> and emergencies. We cannot put road construction in there, but that's an ideal that we may be able to use in the future. So we're looking forward on that greater strategic communications uh, platform of what the best solution might be to communicate that regularly, make sure there's a low impact, and also have an active listening campaign throughout for everyone who may be affected. Uh, the other part of that too is that um, you know we will be working. We will be working every Monday to get out information to the public on how long this is anticipated to continue, where we are with the project, mm -hmm. and how and if we're on schedule. So I think that amount of information and continued. Um, briefing is going to help everybody know where the endpoint is. We've communicated actively and we'll be working each week with the construction contractor. Um, they have the full list of events that are happening and that will anticipate impact and they know those dates and we will be working with them carefully to make sure that we can minimize it wherever possible. Um, One so, other thought, and I, you know, I haven't looked at that full events calendar for, for all these things we have going for the year, but um, I know a lot of things get centralized towards downtown. It might be, there might be some good opportunities here for doing things, you know, somewhat out of downtown to reduce that congestion. Um, you know, I'm looking, I think of like uptown or Gig Harbor North or what parks are, you know, more on the outliers of having to come through that area. So yep. it might be something worth even, might be worth putting, putting in the visitor's guide of that there yeah. is you know so people see it there as well um as many yeah. avenues to communicate that as possible i think will be helpful oh yeah uh that'll be up on our website and uh in our visitor's guide as well um and we are looking for maybe a potential alternative to movies in the park uh because that has less of a financial impact on downtown businesses um it has more of a potential to be moved elsewhere and maybe to a better location that has a little bit more capacity um also that may be something that we can work with a community partner on rather than producing ourselves because as we found and what is what is in our rcw is that these lodging tax funds are specifically for um drawing in tourism from more than 50 miles away one of the great parts of our data by c source uh, geofencing partnership is we've been able to monitor how many people are actually coming in for these events from 50 miles away uh because we are beholden to our auditor to report that um so what we found is movies in the park, that's a community event. It's not necessarily a tourism draw event. It also takes a generally good amount of time to put on those events. And if we really wanted them to draw from 50 miles away, we'd have to make them real blowouts. We'd have to have like showing jaws and having people in, you know, inner tubes in the water and hiring a scuba diver to pull on feet, that kind of thing people come from miles away for. Um, as it exists right now, and it's a great thing. It is a great part of our community. Um, it doesn't necessarily align with our goals. And so we are looking at possibilities to move that, utilize community partner and see what we can do there um, and redirect some of those efforts to something that aligns more with tourism. So I just, I would like to say on behalf of our businesses downtown that we really appreciate the city evaluating this very carefully and considering some options because our businesses are very worried. Um, I mean, they survived COVID, they survived the snow, and now they're facing construction. Um, so we are going to be working on some kind of a campaign uh, to remind people to come downtown. There are other ways to get here, right? Um, but I just really appreciate everybody taking a look at things and how to least impact, um, impact our businesses down here. I will say we're also working on the Pierce Transit Trolley. Um, so that is a great opportunity to lessen car impact downtown and take the trolley to get to our downtown businesses. So we'll hear that uh, contract in our um, February 14th council meeting to, to assure that for this year. Yeah, I think the trolley is the, the great uh, saver for everybody. <laughs> It's, it's one way. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I mean, it, it's, it's actually a very effective and efficient way. And a lot of people that come from out of town love to get on that trolley and just take it on the whole circuit. Um, so I, I, I definitely think we can promote that a lot more than we have. Yep. Yep. We've got a few, a few plans in motion for that. Um, I'm going to also, so I'm going to move that into our next topic too on uh, short-term rentals because that affects several people here in this group um, for public comment and invite our community development director, Katrina Knudsen, 
um, to also help us run through that. I'm going to put the, um, I'm gonna screen share just the call for public comment that we put out the other day. Um, again, and I think you can also see Katrina while we go through that. Um, welcome, to the, welcome to the stage, Katrina. Thank you. The floor is um, yours. Did you want me to just give a brief overview and- that would be great. And then we can maybe talk through some of the questions that um, the community development is seeking public comment on or the planning department or the commission. Excellent. Um, well, thank you for having me. I know you have a very full agenda. I won't take uh, very much time. The community development department, specifically within the planning division, was tasked with looking at short-term rentals in relation to our development regulations. Uh, we have received public comment prior to this, uh, both in favor and um, uh, with some concerns about short-term rentals and how they are occurring within city limits. So we have put out a call for public comments to um, kind of gauge the community on various uh, components of short-term rentals and uh, their regulations. This uh, sparred from the city council last year, putting in a moratorium, six month moratorium for acceptance of lodging level one, which pursuant to our municipal code is a, a lodging within a single family residence. There are other lodging um, land uses within the city, lodging level two and three, which are primarily uh, either multifamily homes being rented out as short-term rentals, uh, bed and breakfasts, and hotels, which I know there's at least one of you on the call today that represents that. And so essentially our code is not set up to properly handle short-term rentals. The, the code was last updated, I believe, when we had our first bed and breakfast within the city. And so the, the staff are, uh, when we were getting applications in for short-term rentals, they don't really fit into anywhere. We know that we can adequately plan for and permit hotels, bed and breakfasts, et cetera, but the code really was silent on what to do in regard to short-term rentals. You know, how many parking spaces should there be? Do they need to, um, uh, do they need to pay a full TIF fee? Uh, is it a type three application that has to go to the hearing examiner or is it a type two application that can be done administratively without, without uh, going through that more formal public process? And so what the council asked us to do is really take the community's temperature on this issue, seek feedback, go through the planning commission and come up with a proposed code amendment to address short-term rentals. Um, what staff is hoping to get out of this is a code that is more clear that we can implement and communicate to our customers in a more effective manner of what is required so that folks are less confused, both uh, customers that are short-term rentals as well as uh, our citizens. So I think Laura has this pulled up here, just some of the questions that we're, we're looking for. I will say that uh, we've received quite a few public comments already, and I would encourage anybody on this committee to take a look at this if you're interested in comment to us. It does seem to be a kind of polarizing issue, and what staff is hoping to do is find the areas of agreement, look at our code, and have the Planning Commission make a recommendation to Council on how we can both create the code that is uh, transparent as easy as possible, and be able to communicate with the community, again, both uh, owners of STRs and the community as to what is allowed in Gig Harbor. We have looked at a number of other cities within Washington that have specific regulations for short-term rentals. And there are some that are uh, pretty lax and there's some that are very um, onerous. And so that's another, Thing that we're looking at with the with the community through this public process is you know how much process should there be what are the citizens expectations for that and uh, provide that information to the council so they can make a an informed decision of how we're going to regulate these within the city so with that being said i i, I just want to open up to the group if there's any questions we don't necessarily have the answers 
I do know there is a short-term rental kind of citizen group that has been formed that's been very proactive with us and looking at other other cities and some of the things that they think can work. And that's been very helpful. And we're looking forward to their comments through the planning commission process. Um, but essentially, you know, staff just wants it to be in code, uh, not a convoluted process that takes interpretation. We get an application and we know what to do with it. We can streamline the process. So that is our ultimate goal from a, a city staff standpoint. Where we end up policy-wise, again, is up to the planning commission and the city council. But I, I will say that this is one of the first times in a while that we've gone out for public comment on a broad level like this. And we're really excited to be able to do that. And I think the community is very eager to provide those comments to us. So Laura um, and commissioners, or commissioner, council member store said I can take any questions if there are any. I don't have any. I don't. I know this is definitely a hot topic. There's been a, a lot floating around about it, so um, I think this will be the one of the first big ones for the city council when it when it comes to a, a vote and and seeing what those standards are. So yeah, heard a, a lot of different things, um, and you know, just Airbnb in general is in the news a lot right now, uh, as it ties in with you know even affordable housing, different topics like that. So it's a very sensitive issue. Uh, you know, it goes from, you know, people who are, are renting on a long-term basis and potentially having to move elsewhere into also people that have made, you know, investments because there is a market for short-term rentals and, you know, there's, there's positives and negatives on, on both sides. So I just, I look forward to finding, you know, uh, a good solution for this. So I do encourage everyone on this call to, you know, um, to voice your, or voice your opinions and help get the word out there too. So um, that would be very helpful. It'll probably be a very long council meeting. <laughs> probably one of our longest ones since the uh, sports complex, I would think. So, all right. Thanks. I, I do have a semantics question for Katrina. Can you tell us what the definition is for short-term rental? Because I know you said there's these different levels. And is it like a single night rental versus a, you know, a weekly rental? Or I don't know what the definitions are. The definition? With within our within our code, oh, sorry James, that within our code, our definitions are inadequate to address short-term rentals. I will just put that out there. Um, lodging level one is um, uh, anything that provides lodging in a single-family home. That is not specific to short-term rentals. The uh, and James, you may have the definition memorized, but uh, mm -hmm. we we anticipate adopting the state definition for short-term rentals so that we're not creating something that is inconsistent with state law. And I believe it's 30 days or less. 29. Yeah, if you cross over that 29 days when you are considered a long-term manager and legalities are changing at that point. Okay. And, and just uh, uh, to follow up on that, lodging tax is only collected on short-term rentals? Is that correct? That is correct, yeah. Okay. Long-term 30, 30 days or more there's no lodging tax. Yeah, and for our code purposes, if you're in there for 30 days or more, then that's just considered a single family home, right? Somebody that's living there that doesn't have a use differentiation. Right, because I know that like the West Wing converted a bunch of their uh, units to longer term rentals during COVID because they just, for whatever reason, um, has it changed their business model quite significantly? Yeah, and that's one of the interesting things. I mean, COVID's thrown a wrench into so many of our, well, all of our lives in many different ways. So it'll be interesting to look at short-term rental, noting that we're not always going to be in this, you know, COVID mm -hmm. uh, world. But anyway, yeah, that is what I would say in terms of definition and um, our use code. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Katrina. We appreciate that. And we it looks like James has a question. Oh, too. yep. Go for it. Just wanted to comment real quick and say that I appreciate that you guys are doing this and that you guys are looking um, at what other municipalities and cities are doing. Um, I'm working not just in Gig Harbor, but in other areas as well. And you're absolutely right there to pay no attention, pay no mind 
who will actually prohibit and then not enforce that. So um, I'm glad that there's going to be clear definition. Um, I think that there is some insight that I can provide via these questions. Uh, I think some of them are you know, kind of silly. Others are very valid. Um, and there's some other points on here that should be added. A lot of areas will have um, distance regulations, meaning if this property is permitted, nothing within 500 feet, within 1,000 feet of this property can be permitted as well. So there's ways to keep it um, just more spread out in terms of what's being uh, offered to folks. That's really a good point. And I think it may, that something like that may work for Gig Harbor in particular for um, our Millville district. There's been a, I mean, it's a historic district that obviously folks care about keeping a, a neighborhood historic feel. And so for, especially for downtown, for that Millville neighborhood, something like that may very well work for, for us. So I, I really would appreciate your input um, to those questions and anything else you think we should be looking at. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Thank Have you. Good rest of your meeting. Um, I'm gonna try to keep it as close to an hour as possible. I'm gonna pop into just one more screen share on our current um, our current performance for Google Ads as well. So this is all time. We started again in last um, September. So this has been a shorter amount of time. We have a much smaller spend here, but this is one of the avenues that we have in order to increase traffic to our website, to that specific booking page that includes a booking uh, link to each one of our booking engines. Uh, we can see here that we spent $783.48 uh, over a course of three months. That was that served 25.9 thousand impressions, resulting in just under 500 clicks. Four location actions with um, that that are similar to that attribution uh, metric for um, Datafy that show people in here in the market, and then 15 conversions, which are the actions taken uh, on our website from those ads. So that's going through the end booking engine. Um, we see 17.9 thousand uh, ads served on mobile devices. So we know that's a real big part of where people are getting their information and clicking through and getting more information on accommodations and reasons to come to Gig Harbor. Um, and our top markets were Seattle, LA, and San Jose. Um, again, not surprising there. Uh, but again, the other surprising metrics were um, 7.3. 7,300 of those were to people ages 25 to 34, which is scaling down in our um, our average user age. So I thought that was super interesting to share and pretty good performance on that metric too. Uh, we may increase our spend there as well as we continue to see um, new content on Give, Visit Gig Harbor. Uh, we're going to Go by photography and media outreach. Uh, our visitors guide with Jenica in uh, in the assistant seat here. We have gotten almost all of our content put together. We are really excited about this year's visitors guide, um, and also distributing it via mail in the same way that Penn Met Parks does with their uh, quarterly programming. And um, so we're going to have a much higher readership rate this year. Um, all of those guides also direct back to visit gigharborwa.com for further information and updates on the event calendar as well. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, Laura, we've already got a call for info too. Can you remind me who's printing the visitor guide? Uh, we have an independent printer this year. So content is still, as, as with all last year's content is being produced in-house, that will be put through graphic design and, and printed um, through a third party and then mailed out. We're looking at um, Kitsap Sun for um, the potential mailing. So, and distribution on uh, Washington State Ferries and back to Port of Seattle as well. So. Um, heading into shortly, media pitches, just a call for info too. We will be pitching uh, the brewery with all of our Gig Harbor breweries. It's another way to approach February for people who aren't doing romance packages. Um, great reason to come out and see Gig Harbor's uh, breweries from Seven Seas to Gig Harbor Brewing to Wet Coast 
out to Zogs. Um, you know, there's a great little trail that we have, and we're going to put that forward to regional and local media, especially South Sounds three to see, um, to try to get some regional and local traffic through uh, to through February. Uh, if you have any of ideas, if you have any content, if anything's happening, if you see anything, uh, send it our way and we'll include it on those pitches. And that's for our earned media outreach too. Um, we'll be pitching top five romantic experiences in Harbor to include the gondola and several other, um, you know, possibilities for two. And we'd also love to put together our top suite. So we're looking at you, Sue, you, James, um, Gig Harbor's most romantic stays. Um, send us your, your romance packages and what, what the options are for guests. And we'll put those forward to earned media sources as well. Um, Super Bowl watch parties, obviously that's this weekend, but we're happy to send out a last minute pitch. Um, I've been in touch with Gig Harbor Brewing on their schedule, um, the tides uh, and others as well. Obviously it's not, it's not a big year for teams that are related to Seattle. So we don't anticipate a huge amount, but it's always fun to, to sh send out a pitch reminding people where our sports bars are and how fun those can be. Uh, we also have two LTAC events coming up in the month of March, which is great. That was one of our uh, target dates. Uh, we didn't have a huge amount of March traffic. So to see the Shamrock run happen and also the Celtic Music Festival uh, happen through Dunnigan Brewing and the Gig Harbor Chamber, we're excited for that. Um, in a Gig Harbor is of course adjacent to Dunnigan and then we'll be seeing a lot of the rooms booked there for specific like vendors and I think use of their ballroom as well. But if there are packages that we can put together for other hotels, I would love to promote those. Um, we will be putting some digital marketing funds behind those on social and to be able to link back to um, our three hotels with options to stay or um, any of our you know, short-term rentals. Uh, that are permitted or outside city limits, uh, those, those work too. And then let's see, we also have our spring and summer planning coming up for proactive media pitches. Uh, the lead time for long, long range magazines or publications is about three months. So we wanna start thinking of what's happening in May and June right now to have active pitches happening. Uh, we have our event calendar that we're using, but if there are any anticipated happenings that, that you have or needs that you have or packages or partnerships that we can help put together a little bit, I would love to do that and get those in a monthly pitch that we send out both to long lead publications and then short lead as well. Uh, for both Summer Sounds and Movies in the Park, we are in the final processes of um, looking at uh, both permitting and bans. We've got a really good lineup this year. Um, we're, we're finalizing contracts, but um, it will be a 10 week series this year. Um, so we'll have 10 bands out. And I think that's gonna be really great. We're looking at getting bigger and better acts to draw in from a more regional audience too. Um, so we've we've gone through, Jenica, what would you say? Like maybe 60 or 70 bands? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to that's get a great, great selection for this year. Um, and we're really, really, I think it's going to be better than than any past year. We've got a really high level of talent. Um, I'm really excited about that, and it'll be great. So we'll put that up that pre press release up shortly as soon as all of those bands are contracted, and um, we'll move forward with that. And of course, you know our plan for movies in the park as well. So. Uh, last but not least, we had a great meeting yesterday with Visit Kitsap. We are going to align on some uh, opportunities to bring in planners from uh, MPI. Um, both on the regional level. And so I know we talked about this last time. I've also talked to Ocean 5 about their meeting space, how to create a really great pitch for Gig Harbor as a destination, uh, group events throughout town, as well as booking ballroom space and room packages as well, because I know we want that back in our, our remit as well. So that's an opportunity for partnership and um, we'll take a further look into it. Any, any items from across the board? Takes us to 12.04 almost. Uh, any, any last comments? Um, Stephanie, I know I saw your email on how to submit um, items for the agenda. Same as, same as usual, um, you can send anything through to me throughout the month. I'll add that in. I will send that um, agenda to Seth, uh, I'm sorry, Councilman Storset for review. Um, and, um, and we'll go from there. So um, I'm free anytime. Anytime you have something that you wanna to add to the agenda, shoot it, shoot it my way. Okay, thank you. And I have some stuff for you today, so. 
Okay. I'll get that over to you for the guy. Oh, good. Yay. Okay. I was going to touch base with you too. And uh, Lindsay, I need things from you too. So <laughs> thank you. It's good to see all of your faces. I think this is a, we have a great new chapter and I'm very mm -hmm. excited um, to, to have this full committee uh, staffed. I'm very excited to have a new chair and we are, we're going forward. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for, you know, your commitment to Gig Harbor and, and allocating time for this and, and also just for your, your knowledge and, um, you know, passion for it. So thank you, Laura. Also, you helped bring me up to speed a bit last week. Um, so I know there's a lot that we cover in these. Um, I think it's also important that you know, while we try to move through them and get the most valuable information, also leaving some time for discussion and hearing some feedback. So, um, so please reach out to me as well um, if there's, you know, something you want to talk about or get my perspective of course um you know my role here is is to be here report it back uh, also with city council uh on some of these ideas and and different things so thank you again for letting me be new next time i, I won't sound so nervous in the beginning of making sure i do these things right like i have the question now of like do i have to motion to adjourn <laughs> do i yes do i do that uh, I okay yes for uh yep so uh, unless there's any other comments, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move. I'll second. All right. That closes it out. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.